What's the scariest you've ever acted towards another human being, part four? Also, please keep supporting us by subscribing us. Account one. When I was a camp counselor, I was the youngest of the counselors, and the kids knew they had a certain amount they could get away with with me. The kids decided to throw some small pebbles at me. One of the other kids told me the plan right before I walked out into the open, so I wasn't surprised. Well, when they started, I was annoyed and all but not mad. Until one hit me in the temple. Not hard enough to break skin, but still jarring. So I ran after the ringleader. I should probably mention that I was holding a baseball bat at the time. And after I cornered him, he was still laughing because he knew I wouldn't hurt him or anything. I just said, you're done. You are out of camp. The blood drained from his face so fast that he began to plead with me. Now I had no power to kick him out, but he didn't know that. And after a little begging, I let him off with a warning, TLDR. Scared the shit out of a kid because he hit me with a pebble. Account 2. In my senior year of high school, I shared a physics class with a majority of jocks and stoners. Some of the football and soccer players were friendly and others were all ego. One particular stoner, Eric, always said anything he felt would piss someone off and was asking for his ass to be handed to him. For our three-day lab on velocity, my physics teacher gave us metal carts no larger than Tonka trucks, which he hand assembled, and explained that everyone would take turns rolling the carts down a two-by-four with weights in the back. One person would hold up the two-by-four while another let the cart go and two groupmates would be responsible to catch it. He paired the class into groups of five, and much to my misfortune, Eric and three of his friends ended up in my group. Surprisingly, Eric's friends were happier than clams that this was the only work we had to do to earn an A. The first two days were spent gathering information and making a spreadsheet, all of which Eric spent sleeping or sneak texting. I thought making him feel included would encourage him to work, but after failed attempts, I let it be since we weren't experimenting yet. At least there were three other able-bodied people helping. Big mistake. On day three, our teacher gave a cart to each group and begged us not to let the carts on the ground. On the first trial, I was holding the two by four, and Eric was supposed to let the cart roll down. But he dropped it on the ground. Our teacher shot us a look, but Eric thought it was funny. So he began dropping the weights on the floor and tapping the two by four against the lab table. I was sick of asking him to help us. So I took the two by four out of his hand and he yelled, what the hell was that for? I replied, you're annoying, that's what. As I set up the next time trial, as I let the cart go, everything seemed to happen in slow motion. As Eric let the two by four fall and the cart flipped and crashed into a desk, my teacher's face turned crimson and any patience I had left vanished. I remember hearing Eric mocking, what? Are you going to cry? Oh my God, I think she's going to cry. All of a sudden, this voice that to this day was not my own screamed, I'm not going to cry. I'm going to wring your fucking neck. The entire class was staring at me in silence and my group members, Eric included, were backing away. Adrenaline took over and I didn't care who helped finish the lab. After that incident, Eric never spoke another word to me the entire year. Account three. Mid to late 90s, ninth grade, I was an asshole. A lot worse than I am now. Well, more overt. Bullying for a vast majority of reasons was rampant through my high school. And I found that being a homeschooled kid with little filter and sarcasm tended to get punches thrown quickly. I am and was accustomed to fighting and at that point had spent five to six years in different martial arts in an attempt to gain discipline for a temper problem. It worked just not until after I had kids. The worst bully we will call Macho Kid for his constant references to Macho Man Randy Savage. He even has a yellow bandana. It was awesome. He had a crew of generally spineless goblins following him around that would throw things, swear at his target, generally parrot anything he'd said. I'd earned his ire for being different. Long hair, boots, button-up shirts, and an army surplus rucksack also, homeschooled and hated sports. Also, 5'4 and 92 pounds. Yeah. I had a gathered group of friends who were all other nerds. Bookworms, band geeks, and drama kids. 
We sat at a table in the back of the cafeteria and tried to ignore everyone. I got into lots of fights, lots of stupid fights. A macho, kid comes in, spots me and brings his crew over to throw insults. I continue eating and reading. The rest of my friends begin to shift and figure out a different place to go. A friend of mine, she's cute, mousy, glasses, plays the flute and is in the drama club. She didn't have a chance, poor Samantha, but I digress. She stands up, macho, kid shoves her back in her seat by her shoulder and says, sit down you little bitch, and she does. I'll admit I had a temper problem, but I handled this with the utmost rationality. I threw my foot across the table and into the wall. I stepped up onto the bench that was attached to the cafeteria tables. I began stomping towards him and began saying, what? very softly and slowly got louder until I started screaming it at him. Everyone started to bolt, but I somehow locked Macho, kid into a mind battle, because I was looking right into his eyes screaming at him until he broke into tears and ran away from me. He wasn't a bully for a solid month after that, avoided everyone. Samantha didn't talk to me ever again, and I spent the rest of that year in peace no more fighting and graduated that year, it was a good thing. Account four. Not me, but a friend. He was walking home late one night, alone and drunk when six guys came up to him, trying to jump him. He swung at the first one with his bricks for hands and dropped him cold. Spinning, he caught another right in the jaw, making him collapse. Two down. The next guy tried to swing, but he ducked, avoided the punch and caught him with a wicked uppercut. The guy wasn't quite out, but another hook left him motionless. Three down. Guy number four came at him, but was quickly silenced by a punch combo as guy five ran off. Guy six, realizing he was fucked, picked up a section of two by four. My buddy looked him dead in the eye and said, you've got one shot, then I'm going to fucking kill you, in the manliest voice he had. The kid dropped the two by four and took off running. Sounds fake but it was confirmed by others that saw what happened from afar. This guy is no fucking joke. Account five. I am way too late for this. But I scared myself when this happened. I am an Asian kid. I was sophomore in high school in a very, very losing wrestling team. I was at a wrestling meet with this school that was known for being rich and douchey. The entire time I was getting warmed up for my match. The guy I was supposed to wrestle was obnoxiously yelling to my side about how pathetic it was that our school had to send an Asian to represent them on my weight class and making fun about how the only thing I should be doing is helping my broke. Dad run a coin laundry store. I kept my cool when we meet at the middle of the mat to shake hands. He comes to me and pulls my strap around the shoulder and lets go of it to make a slap sound. He turns around to do the are you not entertained gesture and tries to shake my right hand with his left hand. As we awkwardly shake hands, he says loudly with an Asian accent. Freeze go very, very easy on me. I lost it when the match began. I went for the fastest move I can pull, cow catcher, and pinned him. He struggled, as did I. I inched my fist closer and closer to his chest. I could hear him choking but I wanted to teach him a lesson, which is when I acted the scariest I've ever seen myself. I whispered in his ear. If you don't tap out, I will kill you. He tapped out. He had bloody lips. I shook his right hand with my left. He was the only one on his team who lost to our high school. It felt good, TLDR. Instead of yelling at a racist punk, I whispered in his ear that I will kill him. Account six. I'd been a useless friend, zoned forever alone heartbreak in my final year of high school. Friend zoned myself, probably, in retrospect, and had this secret crush on this girl for two years. Anyway, college comes around, and I'm trying to forget about it. I get so good at it that my mind literally blocks her out of view. She just kind of washes into the background. So as I'm doing my best to deal with this weirdly intense and long heartbreak, Apparently, it finally comes out among my high school mates that I'd had a thing for her. A few people bring it up, but somehow I act nonchalant and learn how to ignore it or change the subject. Except Derek. Derek had physics class with me, and he'd bring her up almost every time we talked or rode the bus together. 
This happened for about three months straight, and I'd politely acknowledged his statements and dodged his questions with no problem. I'd finally become consciously aware that he was doing it. And in doing so, it made me remember her more, and so I started noticing her around campus more. And I didn't know how I felt about that. So it was completely out of the blue, I mean, I'd given this no thought at all, that as we were on one of those old buses with the weak doors and it was heading into a long, sweeping right-hand turn, that Derek brought her up again. If you ever mention her again, I'm going to throw you off the, the bus. I was completely detached at that moment. It was like watching someone do it in third person. I was so casual about how I said it, I didn't even stare him down. My eyes wandered around like I was making idle conversation. Just scanning the moving scenery, Derek went white and didn't say a thing. I approached him in the coming weeks like nothing happened. He no longer had anything to say to me. I still have no idea where that came from. Account 7. In ninth grade, there was this bully. He was your average me, head bully. The kind you knew was going nowhere in life. I felt like I could have kicked his ass but never did because I didn't want to get in trouble. My public school had a zero tolerance policy. As a kid with aspirations for higher education, I didn't think it'd be worth it. Anyway, one day it was just him and me in the locker room. Everyone else had cleared out. He kept slamming my locker over and over just as I'd open it. I thought he'd get bored, but he didn't. After about the 19th time he'd slammed my locker, I told him to fucking cut that shit out. He shoved me and shouted, what are you gonna do? Hit me and oh! For a moment, I thought I would. I'm short, but not weak. I wanted to just floor him so badly, but I didn't. Instead, I jammed my head against the locker, cutting just underneath my eye. He looked at me in disbelief. I simply walked outside the locker room and let the teachers and such look at my bleeding face. They knew what kind of kid the bully was. I never even had to say a word. The look on his crying face when he was telling them truth. Ah, can't describe how satisfying it was to watch him burn. Kid ended up kicked out of school for that delicious TLDR. I slammed my face against a locker to get a bully in trouble. Account 8. I had been in this college for about two years without ever getting mad. I don't get mad easily and tend to let my friends do things that annoy me a little to avoid confrontation. However, one of my friends was taking this to a new level and deliberately fucking with me because he thought it was funny. So, I'm driving him and two other of my friends on a weekend night about 10 p.m. to go get pizzas. He's trolling me, doing things that I hate, like pretending to be stupid and misquoting facts and criticizing my driving. About 10 minutes into it, on the way back to campus, I fucking lose it. I swerve off the road into an empty parking lot, set the brake, turn around to the back seat and just yell at him with all my might about how he's an immature fuckwad and how I put up with him, do things for him, etc, etc. And he's being a douchebag, it lasts maybe a full minute, and I end it with, get out. He got out of the car and I left him, I came back for him after circling the block and he's always been nicer to me. Account 9. Several occasions. First, I was probably 13 or 14. And I was hanging out with this kid who was the older brother of one of my friends. The three of us always kicked it together since I was in third grade. As we were neighborhood chums, they moved in across the street from me at that time. And we were like three siblings from then until I finished high school. Anyway, I was hanging out with the older of the two guys. And he was three years older than myself. He was being a dick like older brothers sometimes are, and harassing me a, a bit, getting kind of rough, typical older brother shit. We were at one of his friend's houses, who I knew through him, and we were in his basement. He had this wooden practice katana, and I lost my shit and got fed up with the bullshit, snatched it up from wherever it was laying, and backed this kid into a corner, making quick little fainting swings at him while getting the crazy eyes on him. Eventually, he was sitting in a corner, calmly asking me to chill and saying we were cool. I held the wooden sword with a really wide grip and just jabbed the fuck out of his shins with the pointed end. Another time, I was hanging out with the same kid, about the same time frame, and we were walking in the rain through his friend's neighborhood, same one of his friends as mentioned above, and some other neighborhood kids who we didn't know. 
but who were between the two of us in age were decking around in the rainstorm. It was one of those storms where there's no lightning or anything, and it's reasonably warm out still, but the rain is pouring. No wind, really, but just soaking everything. We were both pretty much entirely soaked from head to toe, having been playing outside and walking around in the woods between the neighborhoods and the undeveloped lots and stuff. As we walked past these kids, one of them had a shoe or a bucket or something and had filled it with water from the creek and threw it on me, I was already soaking wet. But the idea that you would do that to somebody you didn't know pissed me off beyond any sort of calm state of reason, and I spun around on this kid, not even sure who it was. And by the time I had done a 180 degree turn, I had a knife out and pointed at him. The fuck do you idiots want? They recoiled and made the most pathetic wincing noise I've ever heard. Motherfuckers ain't got no respect for anybody. Account 10. A girl I used to live with as a friend no more was assaulted with a knife in her apartment by her ex. I was waiting outside. Since she had told me that the guy was violent and had struck her before on more than one occasion, I thought it would be safest for her. I see the guy enter and about 10 sec later I hear my friend screaming for help at the top of her lungs that he has pulled a knife on her. I ran upstairs as quick as I could and in this time I put my leather gloves on. As I was unarmed, I remembered that I had bought a small stone statue that day that was in my right jacket pocket. It would have to do as a last resort if needed, but I sure was hoping that it wasn't going to be necessary. By the time I get into the kitchen of her place, she is huddled up in a little heap in the corner, most likely scared shitless of this guy, and he is standing over her with a six, seven inch kitchen knife. He sees me enter with the gloves on, hands raised up for defense, and every now and then feeling my right jacket pocket for a good grip on the statue if needed. He saw that I wasn't someone he could intimidate in that situation. So after some words back and forth, he ran off and left the knife on his way. He was arrested the following day when he tried to come back to the apartment. The guy was a bit shorter than me, but outweighed me by at least 15, 20 kilograms. She was a tiny 5'2 or 5'3 or something gal. I'm so pissed at these chicken shit guys that can be all mean and scary towards a small young woman, but even with a big knife won't go for the guy who's 6'4". Her mother wanted to put me in the papers for saving her daughter, but that publicity wouldn't have helped anyone. I am happy that I did what I did, though, and no one got hurt, which is the most important thing. Account 11. I was at a party when some younger guy decided it was time to spray everyone with beer from a shaken up beer bottle. I became aware of him when the sleeve of my shirt got soaked, at which point I wheeled towards him and screamed, Stop doing that! Stop doing that! Stop doing that! Emphasizing my point with a thrusting finger, he froze, and the entire party came to a screeching halt. Realizing that I had stopped the party, I waited a beat before busting a move and dancing away. Everyone immediately forgot the hostility and got back to party. And later on, the beer guy apologized to me, and we smoothed everything over. Account 12. I was at my apartment early one morning, getting prepared to go into work. My friend, names changed to protect the innocent. Jennifer called me. It was strange, because we worked at the same place, but different shifts, and 8 a.m. was usually still sleepy time for her. She was in tears. Her boyfriend had woken her up on this day, her 20th birthday, to inform her that he had lied about having a job for the past few months and had been using her half of the rent money to buy and consume cocaine, he had also been hiding the notices that said they were late on rent. That particular morning, there was a note on the door that he could not hide. This was the last day of their eviction process, and they had three hours to vacate the premises. She told me all this in tears, with Zach the boyfriend screaming in the background. I was enraged. Jen was one of my best friends, and no one should be treated the way she was. I proceeded to go to their apartment. When I arrived, the note was still taped to their door, and inside I could hear Zach screaming and ranting, trying to make it sound as if it were somehow her fault that this was happening. I didn't even try the lock. My steel-toed boot crashed into their shitty apartment door, tearing part of the frame from the wall and sending the door flying wide open. 
Zack was facing away from me in the hallway, yelling at Jen about how she couldn't leave. With the door open, he turned to look at me as I regained my balance and barreled towards him full force. He barely had time to say, what the... Before my right hand connected with his face in an open palm slap that sent him to the floor, I am a rather large man. And Zack, well, he wasn't. But I had no respect for him prior to this event, and knowing what he had been doing fueled my hatred to a level I had not and have not since experienced. His defense from my first attack was to lay on the floor, looking at me with wide-eyed confusion. I put my knees onto his shoulders and began hitting his face, fists pummeling him with hammer blows and punches. Every so often he would start to say something, and when he did, I hit him purposefully in the teeth, smashing his mouth apart. I do not know what happened around me at this point. My anger had become so directed, so pure, that nothing seemed to exist outside of me and him, locked in a one-sided combat that would assuredly end in his death. I wanted him to die. I do not know for how long I continued this assault. He eventually fell unconscious from repeated blows to the head, but still I kept going. Never in my life have I experienced such a pure hatred for another human being. Apparently, Jen called my friend Stephen, who was staying at my apartment at the time. Suddenly, I was off of Zack and everything snapped back into focus. Stephen, all 290-pound bowling ball of him, had rushed in and shoved me off of Zack. I looked up at him, confused as to where he had come from, and looked back at Zack. His face, my gods, his face. I crushed his orbital sockets. Teeth and blood were everywhere, including in both my hands. When my senses returned, I began to feel the pain shooting from them and realized that I had not only broken both my hands in several places, but had lacerations from pieces of tooth that were still sticking in them. Zack was unrecognizable. His face was a bloody pulp, in the very literal sense of the term. His breathing was erratic, and when he breathed out, he would cough and spit blood. As it finally dawned on me what exactly I had done, we fled. Stephen hopped in his car and I into mine. Jen called me a few weeks later. Zack did not remember who had assaulted him, but said he had no desire to press charges. This was due to him having a whole lot of cocaine on his person at the time it happened. Police assumed it was drug-related violence, and Jen was not arguing the point. He had to have his face surgically reconstructed. I went home and dug teeth out of my hands with tweezers and soaked them in alcohol. That was almost unbearable, but I didn't have to go to the hospital. I still have some trouble with my left hand hurting sometimes. And I think it was from breaking them on that day. TLDR, I beat a man so badly that he had to have his face reconstructed, and if it wasn't for a friend showing up, I would have beaten him to death. Account 13. I was walking my usual route to work and passed a homeless guy begging for money. He seemed a little hyper but pretty normal, all things considered. I had my headphones in and just ignored him when he came up to me. I walked nearly a full block and felt someone lightly shove me in the back. I turned around and it was the same homeless guy who apparently followed me. I thought I heard some talking or shouting, but it wasn't clear through my headphones. He took an aggressive stance and I thought about some advice that my cousin gave me. Always throw the first punch, so I did. It's the first and only time I've ever punched anyone. He fell backwards and skittered away. It took a few hours for my hands to stop shaking. Such a strange feeling for me. Account 14. A buddy of mine had some beef with a guy who jumped him. This asshat just walked up to him while he was on a park bench. Sucker punched him in the back of the head, then got face to face with my friend as the asshat rummaged through his pockets. Fast forward two weeks. Buddy at party. Sees guy. Buddy carries gun now. He unloads the gun quietly and walks up to the guy. Pistol whips him right in the jaw and puts the gun in his mouth as Asshat lays on the floor. Says, guess what, I remember, and pulls the trigger. Guy shits and pisses and starts crying. Gun was not loaded, remember? I miss my buddy. He moved out of state a year later, makes about 90K, though. He's a financial planner. Account 50. One time when I was 16, my boyfriend's ex was harassing me. I had never met her as she went to the Catholic school, and they broke up eight months prior after a three-month relationship. 
and she had a new boyfriend. I guess she was still hung up on my boyfriend. She's calling my house, even saying shit to my little brother, saying racist shit about me being a pinche guerra, calling me white trash. So it doesn't end. And I decided to go talk to her. I called her, asked her to meet me at the park near her house, to just talk it out, no fighting. She finally arrives, and she doesn't want to talk. She wants to talk shit. I make some comment about how my boyfriend doesn't care that his skinny girlfriend doesn't have fat tits because I have a sweet ass, and K the attack on me, she starts this windmill action and I'm blocking everything. I see an opening and I connect a right hook to her temple, I drop her, she falls like a tranquilized, domesticated animal, she's on the ground and I have fucking character so I don't hit her. I yell, get the fuck up, I'm not done. So she gets up and Pepper sprays me, it was in her pocket and I never saw it. It gets in my right eye, mouth, all over my shoulder. It doesn't stop me, I rage. I pulled out my spiked wristband, put it across my knuckles and yell, you wanna fight dirty, you want this shit. And I rush her, she bolts and I chase her all the way to her front door. The stupid part is that half the pepper spray got all over her. It was super windy outside. TLDR I won, she got zero hits in and pepper sprayed herself as much as she pepper sprayed me.